At Jacksonville University's Marine Science Research Institute, the annual Science on the St. John's brings rods and reels to kids, games, fun, and of course, science. Hands-on science activities, demonstrations of equipment, and scientific instruments, explanations of research projects, and issues facing our river were all at hand. Join me as I tour some of the exhibits and science on display at Science on the St. John's. This is our, our water quality instrument that we use when we're taking water quality on the boats. Uh, we take water quality at every net that we sample. And what we take is we do the salinity, the conductivity, the temperature of the water, and the pH of the water. If we were on the open ocean, we'd do this off the back of a boat with a much bigger net. But today we just want to get some phytoplankton to look at under the microscope and show people what's going on in the St. John's River today. This mesh plankton net filters the water, concentrating the plankton and small particles into the bottle. This young scientist gets an up-close look under the microscope. So here we have a sample from the Ortega River, and what we did was take a liter of water and filter it, and we found 39 microplastics on this small sample. Using microscopes, visitors were able to view these tiny microfiber threads from the Ortega River, as well as learn how they ended up in the river in the first place. You can find microfibers in our clothing, such as fleece jackets, nylons, polyesters, and so when you're doing a load of laundry, uh, these microfibers actually get released into the water, and then they go into our water treatment plants, which don't have the abilities to filter them out. And so these microfibers actually get into our waterways, such as our rivers and lakes, and eventually into our oceans. I'm looking at identifying Vibrio bacteria in oyster tissue and water samples from Sisters Creek, which is part of the old Duval County shellfish harvesting area. So using our mass spectrometer, we're able to identify our different species of Vibrio, looking at the similarities and differences. And visitors were able to get up close to some of these Vibrio bacteria growing in petri dishes. This is Vibrio perihemolyticus, and it can cause gastrointestinal infections. You can get diarrhea, uh, vomiting, fevers from this, dehydration, severe dehydration from it. Basically this project is, is if we were to go out today and go take an oyster and eat it raw, what are the chances that we could potentially get infected with a harmful bacteria? And down the hall in the Miller-Wilson lab... You may be wondering how we get the sediment from the bottom of the river and some of the places that we sample is over 20 feet deep. What we use is a petite ponar, which is a device that uses, that grabs onto the sample once it's deployed lower it gently into the water, allow it to hit the top of the sediment where it will deploy. Sediments obtained using this powerful jaw are then taken back to the lab and analyzed for mercury pollution. Algal blooms were also on display. You could view an algal bloom under the microscope, as well as learn about local advocacy efforts. We're currently working on a project called the Citizen Science Project, in which we encourage people to be the eyes and the ears of the river um, to keep in a lookout for algae blooms. Just down the hall in JU's Harmful Algal Bloom Lab. I'm studying microcystins, which are liver toxins that are formed by algal blooms. We shoot it with a laser, and it's in a crystal structure. The crystal structure explodes, and the microcystin flies through a vacuum chamber and hits a plate that tells us that it is 995 of mass. That represents this microcystin. So with that, I'm able to identify the different microcystins we have in the water to understand how toxic they are. And around the corner, isotopes in Jacksonville water are being analyzed. So the beautiful thing about water and isotopes in water is that it fingerprints the water. We tell something about the physical system that water came from. So rainfall has a very specific fingerprint. Groundwater has a very specific fingerprint. Um, Seawater has a very specific fingerprint. 
So here's the output from the instrument. And these red lines here are actually the isotope values of the particular samples. And these values are very consistent with rainfall in this area. So what we're seeing in our DI water even here at the laboratory is it mimics the rainfall falling on Jacksonville. The Science on the St. John's event was developed to allow us to expose the general public to what we're doing here at the MSRI and to help them understand some of the issues and problems of the St. John's River. When I was walking around looking at the people and the children and seeing the, the smiles and the interaction and the questions and the sense of awe, uh, that sense of wonder that a lot of people have when they start looking at what's going on, things they didn't understand, didn't know about, had a chance to talk to people about, ask about, it really was exciting.